Hey everyone, it's Anna. Welcome back to my channel. So I had some people ask um, to see if I could show an entire painted image um, using this technique that I'm using on the background to stamp some interest and uh, watercoloring the image as well. So instead of uh, using this particular image, I thought I would go ahead and do a different image. So I'm going to do this Starry Snowman stamp. This is one of my uh, recent whippersnapper stamps. And uh, the snowman is wearing a cute little sweater. She's holding a, um, he or she is holding a star wand and has some star garland on her hat or his hat. And then um, there's a sweet, a little gingerbread there tucked in the snowman's arm as well. So I thought I would show you the technique um, using this particular stamp since I've already done a card with the um, cute little gingers in the flower sifter. Um, and so in addition to this stamp, I'm also going to be using this stamp as well. This is my Montana Sweetheart stamp from Whippersnapper. And this is the stamp itself. So it's quite a nice size actually. And so I'll be using that as well. Um, um, as the snowman. So what I'm going to do is I have a piece of watercolor paper. It's really important to use watercolor paper. I have a piece of watercolor paper adhered um, down with my magnet in my mini misty and I'm just going to place my stamp here somewhere in the middle of my watercolor paper and then what I like about the misty um, or one of the things I love so many things about the misty um, is that the grid on the um, front lid here you can actually see um, if your stamp is positioned straight there's actually some grid lines on the um, surface there and so what I like to do is be able to check up portion of the image here and just make sure that it's um, adhered to my lid straight and then um, I know it'll stamp straight on my um, uh, cardstock. So let me go ahead and ink this. I'm going to ink it um, in this black archival ink. This is a permanent ink and uh, so my image will stay nice and crisp uh, after I do all of my watercolor techniques. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick stamp here. And also what I love about the Misty is being able to stamp an image in the exact same spot multiple times. So you can make sure that you get a really great uh, clear impression. So there's two. I think I'll give it one more um, impression here. There you go. I also really like the mini, it's my favorite, the mini Misty is my favorite um, size of Misty's because it's just so convenient to use here on my desk that always seems to get like 12 inches of working space. So I'm going to set that off to the side and let my ink dry here a little bit. Um, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of um, distress um, to my watercolor paper by using a uh, vintage photo distress ink pad. And I'm going to use a blending brush and I'm going to get a piece of paper down here so that my work surface doesn't get all inky. I actually re need to re-ink my ink pad here. It's getting, it's getting rather dry, which to be honest, works really well, um, you know, if I'm using this kind of technique because then I don't have to worry about over-inking my blending brush. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna give the outside edges a little more ink than I would the center. I'm gonna go ahead and do like a um, vintage style or antique style, prim style. Uh, to this card. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the outside edges than I am to the center. You can kind of see that gives it kind of like a vignette of ink. So there's that. So now we've gone from a, compl a complete white piece of watercolor paper to one that uh, looks a little more aged. So let me pull in my watercolor palette and I'll show you how I watercolor the image. So this is the watercolor palette I've been using and enjoying a lot lately. This is the Mi Lang watercolor set and it's a set of 48. The first three rows here are just your standard watercolor um, pigments. And then this fourth row here at the bottom, these are all shimmer uh, pigments. And um, I just really have been loving this. I haven't actually put it away um, for several months. Um, I received this this summer and I just haven't even bothered putting it away because I use it so often on my projects. This is the um, shimmer paint row. So you can see how beautiful those shimmers are. So really, really beautiful. And then um, also under here I have uh, the swatch card for all the standard pigments as well you can see there. So, And then these are the shimmer paints on white. 
So it's a really beautiful set um, and so easy to use. And I just find that just leaving it here on my desk is just so convenient. And um, so that's what I've been doing. I did also cut away. There was like a pencil tray as part of this white um, tray here. There was a little spot where you could put a pencil or a paintbrush. Um, I just cut that off so that I could get access to the underneath here area a little bit easier. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm going to be using this number four Princeton round paintbrush to watercolor my image. I have some um, water here off to the side and uh, so I'll just be dabbing in that. And then I have a just a little cloth here to dab my paintbrush on and remove excess water. So that's off to the side there. You may not be able to see it. So I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see uh, the image a little better. You won't be able to see the paint palette at all, but that's okay. Okay, I think that will probably work. All right, so I'm gonna start uh, by watercoloring my image. Um, snowmen are super easy to color because you'd actually don't have to give them much color at all. They are happy being mostly white. Whoops, had a big old drop of water come off there. Um, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of um, purple and a little bit of blue to give my snowman just some depth to his uh, sh to the shadows where they would fall. And also what you can do, because you've added that little bit of ink, you can go over the rest of the area um, with just a damp paintbrush, and that will activate that ink a little bit and then not make there be such hard edges um, where you transition from no color to color, just so that ink gets activated. And I'll add a little bit of blue. You want your snowman to look white even though he's not actually left white. And then um, same thing with the belly. I'm just going to go down here um, just with very little pigment on my brush. I'm going to activate this uh, ink. The nice thing about the Distress Inks is that they are um, reactive to water, so they're beautiful to watercolor with, um, and they leave you with really nice results. And they work really well with other um, water-based mediums like watercolor paints. So now that I've activated that ink, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of that same blue that I used up on the snowman's face to add just a little bit of um, depth and dimension to the snowman's belly. So I think I'll add a little bit more blue. I think that's pretty cute. So now I'll move on to different areas of the snowman. You want to be careful not to paint up next to um, an area that you've just done. That way they don't bleed together. So you want to let your um, different areas of your um, image dry. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the snowman's hat. So I'm going to use some bluish, dark bluish brown to do that. And because this has a little bit more pigment in it, I'm not just um, looking for a white. I don't actually have to go in and pre-activate that ink like I did down here um, because painting it um, like this will activate it just fine. You won't actually see a transition line. Okay, and now I can move on to the brim of his hat here. Um, his face is adequately dry so that the Brown won't bleed into his face. Okay, cute, cute already. <laughs> and I can add a little bit more brown um, to some of the areas on the hat just to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. And then I'll do the same thing on the brill brim of the hat, add just a little bit more brown. Very cute. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the sweater. Um, I'm gonna paint the sweater green, like a earthy green, olive green maybe. Just like I did for the um, stamp design cover. Mm -hmm. I think watercoloring is so fun and relaxing and um, if you don't get too worked up in the details, it can be a very fun and quick way to uh, color a stamped image. 
of course, if you get wrapped up in the layers and, you know, adding layer after layer after layer over your watercolor image, it can take a lot longer and enjoy the process even more but I don't mind just doing really quick little watercolor washes here and I think they turn out really cute. So get some down here on the bottom of his sweater. And now I think I'll go back into some of these areas down here below his arms where there'd be a little bit of uh, drop shadow and just add a little bit more pigment there. And then behind my gingerbread here as well, there would be a little bit of a drop shadow, so I'll go ahead and paint that in too. So there we go. Um, let's see, for the mittens, I think I'll paint them uh, brown. Oh, maybe I'll go with blue since my gingerbread's going to be brown. Maybe I'll paint his mittens blue, like a um, an indigo type blue. Had a little green on my paintbrush there still. You can always leave just a slight um, white edge here um, if you're painting next to an um, area that you've just painted before. You can leave a little white edge there where the paint doesn't go all the way to the line and that will keep your um, paint colors from blending into each other as well and it also gives it a little bit of a highlight so like this the uh, you know sunlight is hitting the top of the snowman's mittens there. Okay so there we have uh, some mittens. I think I'll do the snowman's hat band, that same indigo blue. Not pretty. I think this. I think they call this color Payne's gray in the um, in the paint set. Like if you look at what it's officially labeled <laughs> as, what the color name is, I think they have this one listed as Payne's gray. And I decided to add a little bit more pigment to these mittens here just to give them a little more depth. Okay, so now I can move on to maybe my stars. Actually, I think I'll move on to the gingerbread. The stars, if I moved on to here, um, this one might uh, be, you know, tempted to bleed in with my hat band, so I'll let that area dry a little bit more. So I'll paint my gingerbread first. I'm gonna choose a nice gingery color brown. From my paint set here and dab off the extra water. See this paintbrush, um, you have to be careful because you can get uh, drops of water up here on the ferrule and they can run down and um, flood your painting, especially when you're doing such a small painting like this one. One drop of water can be really um, a disastrous <laughs> to your results. Cause you to have to do a little bit of cleanup. So there's my little ginger. So I'll let him dry just a little bit and then I'll come back in and dab in a little bit more color there. I'm gonna also add a little bit more color up here to my hat. Just for some extra interest. And I can also paint the snowman's nose. So I'm gonna go with like a okra, uh, excuse me, an ochre, I always say okra ochre um, burnt orange type color for his nose and then I think I'll lighten up that um, color and use it for my stars so almost uh, straight yellow ochre And then you need to um, set this aside and let it dry. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, but you can go in and add a little bit more paint to some areas that you'd like, um, but set it aside and allow it to dry. I'm gonna actually paint a little bit in my uh, uh, snowman's star wand here using uh, brown. Almost got caught up by a water droplet again. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add a little bit more brown to my ginger as well. There we go. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so most of my snowman is dry. The only thing that's still wet is this star here, a little bit on the hat band and my ginger. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and uh, give a little bit of um, shadow area to around my snowman. So I'm going to use a really light bluish gray color just really, really pale. And you know, most of the time when you're painting small images like this, the paint that you have up in your palette lid is plenty of paint uh, for you to paint uh, an image. So I'm gonna grab some just really light grayish blue, probably even has a little green mixed in there. And I'm just really loosely going to paint around my, the outside of my image. And you can also see that it, what it's doing is activating the ink, the distress ink that's um, on my card panel as well. So I'll just drop in a little bit more color here and a little bit of ground. Great. So now that that's done, I'm going to add actually a little bit up here around my hat as well. Just grab a little bit more pigment from my palette lid and be good. See, it doesn't even have to match. This is more purple than this is more gray or green. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paintbrush and dip it in my water and I'm just going to add some splatters just to add a little bit more interest uh, to my background. And also what that's going to do is um, activate that distress ink where uh, the water is and just give me a little bit more um, interest. And then if you would like, you can actually use a um, paper towel and you can dab up that water and it will leave um, what it will do is it'll actually pick up the pigment there and leave uh, little interesting marks on your painting so that's that step so next what I'm gonna do is show you how I actually uh, ink and um, stamp with my text script here uh, text stamp so I'm going to use the same vintage photo distress ink that I used previously. And I'm going to ink up my ink pad or my uh, stamp here. And I find that leaving uh, the stamp on my work surface like this works better than putting it on a mounted block um, or in a misty or anything like that. So then what I'm going to do is take a, just a bottle of water. This is just a little mister bottle and give that stamp just a couple of really light mists so that that ink kind of gets activated on that stamp. You can see the ink kind of pooling up right there and there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my stamped panel and I'm going to find an area of the stamp that I want to transfer to my paper and I'm going to uh, press, let's see, where do I want? I'm going to press the stamp or press the watercolor paper onto that stamp, but I'm not doing it evenly. I'm not providing, I'm not pushing down evenly. I'm just kind of touching it here and there so that that ink transfers to my stamped image in a sort of rander, random haphazard way. And if it goes part, partially over my stamped image, I'm okay with that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some down here at the bottom as well. And again, I'm not gonna press down evenly. I'm not gonna push the whole panel onto the stamp. I'm just kind of, touching the cardstock or the watercolor paper to that stamp. I think that looks pretty cute. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside and let that dry. And what that's gonna do, that ink is going to um, bleed into that watercolor paper and it's gonna be really beautiful how it um, mixes and mingles with the Distress Ink and the watercolor paper. So now we'll just set that aside and let that dry. And meanwhile, I'll go ahead and clean my stamp here. So I'm just going to use a little bit of Stampin' Mist. Since my stamp is already fairly wet from the water, but getting all that excess off uh, before I store my stamp away is important. All right, and it looks like um, that's uh, at least dry enough. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my um, ink pad again and I'm going to use my blending brush and I'm just going to darken up a little bit of those edges where I'd like there to be a little bit more definition to the outside edge. 
and adding even a little bit more ink to my snowman's belly. You can go over the stamped image a little bit if you'd like it to be a little darker. And uh, I think it turns out super cute every single time. So, and that's how I've been doing these fun stamped images that are watercolored and have a little bit of the distressed stamping in the background. The last thing you can do, and I like to do this typically once I have my entire card assembled, uh, the last thing that you can do is you can add some shimmer splatters to the design. And again, I've just been using uh, these three shimmer paints that are in my watercolor set here. You can also use um, other shimmer paints or glimmer mists if you have them handy, or um, even some uh, inks that have shimmer in them as well. So I'm just gonna use this because it's here on my desk and completely handy. And I'm just going to activate the shimmers uh, in my palette here and get it nice and juicy on my brush. And then I can go ahead and splatter my painted design with that beautiful gold shimmer. And I think that looks really beautiful. And actually I could even use this gold shimmer to add some highlights on my stars so they get nice and sparkly as well. And that's a fun way uh, to tie in the shimmer to your stamp design is by adding it to something in the design itself. There you go. That's my completed little stamped panel that has the addition of the uh, text stamping in the background for a little bit of added interest using distress inks and watercolors. So I hope this has been really helpful and I hope you try this technique. It's one of my absolute favorites and super, super fun and easy. So thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hello, I'm back real quick to share. Um, I thought you might like to see how I finished my card. I used a piece, a couple pieces of papers actually from this paper studio pad um, called Old World Winter. And Sue Crozier gave this to me last year. So thank you so much, Sue. It's a beautiful paper pad and I am very much enjoy it. And so what I did is I actually mounted my uh, stamped panel here on a piece of black cardstock just for a little base. And then I used a piece of that paper there from that pad and also another piece here. This is the music paper uh, from that pad and then I just mounted it on a green um, card base there. So that's my finished card. Thank you again so much for watching, and I hope you found this enjoyable. Talk to you later. Bye!